10 years ago, I got a call from a family. The patriarch of their family was dying. He was in a nursing home. His name was Joe. He was about 90 years of age. And the family kind of made the mistake a lot of families do, where they don't want to bring the priest in for last rites too early because they're scared by seeing the priest, the person's going to think they're dying, and they don't want to do that. So they usually wait a little too long, and by the time we get there as priest, the person who you're about to anoint is usually totally out of it, not speaking anymore, their eyes are closed. And this family kind of made that same mistake. And I got there to the room, and it was a bittersweet moment, obviously, for the family. This man lived a long, good Christian life, and it was sweet in the sense that you know, we all knew he was going home to God. He was a really a good, good Christian. But bitter because you're losing the patriarch of your family. So as I walked into the room, it was at Care One in, in Westwood, I remember it well, he was lying down flat on his back, and the daughter, who was about 60 years of age, was here, the granddaughter about 30 years of age, and then the son-in-law over here. And there was a family that I knew well, and I went in there and I said to them what I say to many families. I said, I, I don't want to scandalize you, but I'm going to be shouting most of the prayers. Because one of the things I was taught as a young priest was that one of the last senses to go is hearing. So even when people can't articulate, they can't speak, and they can't even see, their hearing is still there. So we gathered around him and shouting out these prayers and but he wasn't responding to anything, completely out of it, lying flat on his back. And we even gathered around him. We all held hands. We prayed the Our Father. And then I got to the final, final blessing. So I'm like right over him, right there, right next to the son-in-law. We kind of sw swapped places. And I said, and may Almighty God bless you, the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And at that Thank God the family was there because no one would have believed me. Joe sat up, looked me right in the eyes, right in my face, smiled, says, Amen. <laughs> and then closed his eyes and went back down. And we were all so shocked and surprised that we had the same reaction you did. We started laughing. Like, we didn't know what to do with this. It was like a moment I said, thank God you're here, and thank God I'm here, that we can witness to each other. Otherwise, people would think we're crazy that this guy hasn't spoken for days now. It says his final word, and he died just a few hours after that. But his final word was amen. And amen is one of those beautiful words that we say over and over at Mass. And it's actually a word that comes to us uncontaminated from the Hebrew, amen, to the Greek, amen, to Latin, amen, to English. doesn't change at all, all throughout. It's always been that word. I love the way the French say it, on si soit-il, or asi sea in Spanish. So be it. But what the word actually means is truth or certainty. I agree. I believe this to be true. And what a way to end a good Christian life. Amen, smile on your face, and out you go. That's the first point of my homily. Second point of my homily, as you know, uh, the three of us priests, we teach a uh, religion class to our kids in our school. Anthony's one of my students, right? So once a week, uh, once a month, I take a whole week, and I teach the third, fourth, and fifth graders. we from 8 o'clock to 8.40. It's one of my favorite activities to do. And just recently, when I was with them, I allowed them to ask me questions. And I feel that a wide range of questions. Some are very funny, and some are very profound. But the one question that really stuck with me, is when the kids asked, Father, what's your favorite thing about being a priest? What's your favorite thing? And you know, I thought about it. I don't know why. No one's ever asked me that before. And I really thought about it, and I said, you know, what I really, really love about being a priest is what we're all about to do in a few minutes from now. When each one of you will individually come up and I will hold up 
Jesus, the body of Christ, Corpus Christi, the name of this feast day today. I will hold up the body of Christ to you, and I'll look you in the eye, and I'll say, the body of Christ, and you'll smile, and you will say, amen. I believe. I really know with great certainty that this is Jesus. I love being a priest to give to my fellow human beings God. I mean, how awesome is that? That through my very human hands, through the moment of the consecration, the transubstantiation, Jesus comes among us in the Eucharist. So that's what I shared with them. But then I always turn the tables on the kids. So whenever I ask a question or receive a question, I ask one in return. So I said to the kids, and Fiona, I don't know if you remember this, I think you were there in class as well. I said, listen guys, I've been with you for four years, okay? You've heard a lot of my homilies. Like, what's the homily you remember the most? I wanted to see if they were awake or asleep, you know, during my homilies. And the one that was most popular among them, which really warmed my heart, and you may remember it, was the marbles and diamonds. I don't know if you remember that homily. And I really took it from Fulton Sheen, where Fulton Sheen, and just to summarize it, if, if you don't remember, it was a few years ago, where he says, when you see a gemologist working for the first day at the jewelry store, when he's just graduated from school, puts on the white gloves, lays out the velvet, holds the diamond, and he's just looking at it and so careful with it and everything. But then you go, you know, two years later, three years later, you go back to the jewelry shop, and he's shooting those diamonds across the counter as if they were marbles, right? And when I gave that homily, I was talking about how it related to our lives. Like, I see a lot of young couples preparing them for marriage. It's really wonderful. You see a young couple come into the office, and they're holding hands, and they're so excited, and he opens the door for her, and he does all of these things. And then you visit them like three or four years later. I was going to say, there's a lot of marbles going on and not too many diamonds, right? But that happens to us as priests as well. I remember the very first time I ever distributed communion, I was so mesmerized by the fact that I was holding God in my hand and I was giving God to a fellow human being. And I mean, my hand was trembling, it was shaking, I was so mesmerized by the experience. And as time goes by, obviously that nervousness, thankfully, wears off. Otherwise, I'd be missing you guys right, all the time. But I never want that awe, never want that deep, deep conviction of what we're doing ever to disappear. And that's the prayer I have for all seminarians and all priests. So I'm going to get to the third point of my homily. And this is for all of you that are here. You are part of the one-third of Catholics who attend Mass every week. I'm sure you're aware of the stats. Right? Two-thirds of Catholics don't come every week. I could have guessed who was going to be here for this Mass, right? When this Holy Day of Obligation was reinstated, I knew it was going to be all of you, right? I knew it was going to be because you're the ones 15 months ago, right, who came week after week. And then when the pandemic shut down, obviously we had to do what we had to do. The other two-thirds are what actually causes me the most concern. And as you know, as a parish, we're really trying to reach out to the marginals and try to find ways to bring them back, right, so that they can receive Jesus and Holy Communion week after week like you do. But rather than focusing on them, I just want to focus on you. And I want to say to you, just like the word Eucharist means thanksgiving, I want to let you know how thankful I am for you, for your fidelity, that you take seriously the holy days of obligation, that you recognize it's not just a holy day of obligation, I'm doing it because I have to do it, but it's a day of celebration, that I get to receive God, I get to receive Jesus and Holy Communion. And so I just want to take this moment to end my homily and just to say thank you. Thank you for being like that man, Joe. Thank you for being those people who look us eye to eye each week and with a smile on your face as I give you the body of Christ, 
you say, Amen. So be it. I believe. So if I can just end my homily here, can you just indulge me? I'm going to give you one final blessing, just as I gave to Joe. And can you respond with that same conviction, that same volume, that same smile? May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.